Hey, this is Alex, and today I will be going over Grammar Point 1 of our Grammar Workbook 9th edition. So please turn to Grammar Point 1 on the first page for modifiers. Now, modifiers are one of the most important topics in grammar and also on the SAT and ACT. Um, if you understand what modifiers are, you will have a very easy time doing the grammar section on the SAT and the English section on the ACT. On the other hand, if you don't understand how modifiers work, then you will really struggle on the grammar sections. So what is a modifier? Um, and go ahead and write the notes down. A modifier describes the closest and make closest uh, capitalized letter and also underline it. The closest noun, verb, or sentence. A modifier describes the closest noun, verb, or sentence. And here I'll also do the underline of the word closest. Let me change this color to red. Oops. Let me do that. Let me do that. All right. The closest noun, verb, or sentence. What does that mean? Uh, if I tell you that in this sentence here, wearing a white suit here is a modifier, um, what does wearing a white suit here describe? So according to the definition, a modifier describes the closest noun, verb, or sentence. So in according to the definition, then wearing a white suit would be describing, is it the waiter or the steak? Da, 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 da. Yes, you're right, it is the steak. So draw an arrow to the steak. And if you're not sure why this describes the steak, then because the definition says the closest noun, verb, or sentence. And the waiter here is not the closest. The word steak here is the closest. So According to how this sentence is written here, then wearing a white suit is describing the steak and not the waiter. So obviously this is wrong, because the steak should not be wearing a white suit. So how should you change the sentence to make it correct? And for now, let's say you're only allowed to restructure the sentence, but not really um, change any of the wording here. Okay, I'll give you a few seconds to think about how to change the sentence, and you can go ahead and write your answers here in the first one or the second one. Uh, there are two ways that you can re rearrange a sentence to make it right. So the first way is, well, since wearing a white suit here is describing the waiter, uh, or it should be describing the waiter, then you want to move wearing a white suit next to the waiter. Does that make sense? Um, not next to the steak because it doesn't describe the steak. So something you can do here is you can say, the waiter wearing a white suit serves as our steak. And um, here's a note-taking strategy. You can write down the whole sentence. The waiter uh, wearing a white suit serves as our steak. You can do that, but that's a lot of things to write down. and That's a way to think. So what can you do here to save a few strokes and save you a lot of time in uh, writing down the right answer, but um, at the same time, save you a lot of time in writing it down? So what you can do is, instead of writing down, for example, the whole phrase here, uh, wearing a white suit, what if you just do wearing dot dot dot? Um, and I think that's clear enough with the brackets here and the word wearing um, to tell you, maybe a few months later when you're reviewing the book, that uh, this bracket here with wearing means wearing a white suit. Okay, so you could do the waiter wearing dot dot dot, and then here maybe you can do serves dot dot dot. I think that's enough keywords down to let you know that the answer is the waiter wearing a white suit serves as our steak. Okay, and uh, to make it clear that wearing a white suit describes a waiter, I also want you to draw an arrow from wearing a white suit to the waiter, like so. Okay, and what's the second way to write the sentence? The second way you can do it is you can have, uh, what if you have the word, the phrase wearing a white suit in the beginning of the sentence? So. Wearing a white suit, so wearing dot dot dot, um, the waiter serves as our steak. In this case, the phrase wearing the wearing a white suit is also describing the waiter because why? Because wearing a white suit, this modifier here, is the closest to the waiter. So also draw an arrow to the phrase waiter from wearing a white suit. Like so. Okay, hopefully everything makes sense so far. And in English, there are these six uh, phrases that are that tell you it's the beginning of a modifier. 
Um, and so that's what we're calling here a modifier starters. And I'm putting modifi modifier starters in quotes here because uh, if you talk to a grammar grammatician, uh, there's no such thing as modifier starters, but it makes sense to call it this way. So we're going to call it modifier starters here. Um, and whenever you see one of these six uh, words, one of these six categories of words, then you know that uh, this is the beginning of a modifier. So the first thing is uh, something that we see here uh, in wearing a white suit. Um, those are words like uh, verb ing, and the technical term of it is called a present participle. Um, you don't really need to know the phrase present participle, that's what grammar people call it. So you can put that in, qu in quotes, uh, in quotes, present participle, present participle, in quotes. And present participles are like wearing a white suit, those are verb ing phrases. So you can put here verb ing. And after verb ing, I want you to put in your notes, um, put down two more examples of present participles. Um, but uh, So wearing is one here, um, but put down two on your own so that um, your teacher can make sure that you really understand what present participles are. Um, so I'll put down, uh, let's say, uh, seeing is a present participle verb ing, and then put down, so in your notes you should have two uh, verb plus ing's here for present participle. Okay, so these are present participles. Uh, so in this sentence, where is the present participle? And hopefully you find that, sorry, there's noise. Hopefully you find that in the sentence, selling is a present participle. And so selling tells you that that's the beginning of a modifier. So put a bracket around uh, starting from selling. And selling what? It's selling sans favor fried chicken. So put a bracket around the whole phrase, selling sans favor fried chicken. And what does that describe? That describes, according to the def definition, a modifier describes the closest noun verb or sentence. So, selling sense for fried chicken describes what? Draw an arrow to it, and it describes the place. So, draw an arrow to the place. Okay. And modifiers are like extra uh, phrases, extra fluff to the sentence. So, you can take out the modifier and the sentence should still make sense. If you take out the modifier here, then the sentence becomes, the place is called Tupac. And, but which place is it? This modifier here makes it a little bit more specific. The place selling stamps for fried chicken is called Tupac. And you can think of this sentence in Chinese, if you understand Chinese. Um, so this is saying, like, 那个地方是 Tupac. But like, which Difang is it? And this modifier describes, like, 那个地方. So this is, like, my Sam's 最喜欢的 fried chicken, the Difang is called Tupac. So you can think of this arrow here like the word the in Chinese. So this is like, which place? It's like selling stamps for fried chicken, the place. It's called Tupac. If you don't understand Chinese, don't worry about it. Um, it should still make sense in English also. It's like the place, but like which place is it? It's the place that's selling stamps for favorite fried chicken. So this, this part makes the place a little bit more specific. All right, so moving on to number two. There's a present participle and there's something called a past participle. So number two here, you'll write down past participle, participle. And you should still put past participle in quotes because again, that's what the grammar people call it, past participle. Um, and again, you don't have to remember what past participle is, but you have to know examples of them. And past participles are like um, the third verb. So here I can, I'll put down, um, actually don't write this yet. Um, I want you to understand what past participles are and write it down in your own way. So past participle could be called the third verb. Um, I don't know if you remember maybe in like third or fourth grade when you're learning grammar, um, you learned that there are like three different kinds of verbs. There's like eat, like the present tense, and then there's ate, and then there's like eaten. That eaten is the third verb. Um, you can also call the past participle like the passive verb, like uh, the cake was eaten, so the word eaten. So you can either write down like third verb or passive verb um, if that makes sense to you. If they don't, if passive verb doesn't make sense to you, then don't write down passive verb. Uh, maybe the third verb makes sense. Um, and here I also want you to write down two more examples of past participles by yourself in your notes. And then uh, check with your classmates and see if your classmate has the right past participle. Again, they're like past part, uh, like the third verb, like eaten, or 
in this sentence here, fried chicken soaked by Tupac is Sam's favorite. Uh, where is the past participle in this sentence? It is the word sold. Um, so sold, sold what? Sold by whom? This is sold by Tupac. So so by Tupac, this whole phrase here is the modifier. So bracket that. And what does so by Tupac describe? It describes the fried chicken. So draw an arrow from here to the word chicken. So, okay, and again, if you ignore the modifier, this sentence becomes fried chicken is Sam's favorite. And, but which fried chicken is the one that's so by Tupac. So like Tupac that my the fried chicken is Sam's favorite. Now, the third kind of modifier starters are something called a uh, relative pronoun. Pro you, you probably learned about this if you've ever taken a grammar class, maybe in school. If not, again, don't worry about this term relative pronoun. Uh, we, might, we might use it in the future, we might not, but uh, again, knowing the examples of relative pronoun is a lot more important. So relative pronouns are words like that, or which, or... Uh, who uh, and here I want you to write down maybe one maybe two if you can think of um, other relative pronouns there are a few okay so words like that or which or who are relative pronouns write it down and check with your neighbor to see if your neighbor has uh, two relative pronouns correctly written down now in this sentence she loves the jacket that her dad gave her where is the relative pronoun uh, one obese word and just a freebie point that the word that here uh, I wrote it here for you. So she loves a jacket that her dad gave her. The word that here is a modifier starter. So you have a bracket that starts from the word that. And that what? That her dad gave her is the whole phrase. So that her dad gave her, bracket the whole thing. And what does that describe? Does it describe she or loves the jacket? Or loves or the jacket? And the answer is the jacket because again, the jacket is the closest verb, uh, noun, verb, or sentence. So draw an arrow to the jacket. Like so. So she loves the jacket, but which jacket is it? It's the one that her dad gave her. And so this part makes the jacket a little bit more clear. It's like adding colors to the sentence. Now, exam uh, modifier number, uh, modifier starter number four is something called a preposition. Preposition. Okay, kind of a long word here. What are, what are prepositions? Prepositions are words like of, or in, or by, and so on. Uh, write down two more here. And if you don't know what prepositions are, one way to check uh, whether a word is a preposition is you can think of it as, um, if you look at this word, if this word looks like preposition, pre like before. So uh, something that you would use before um, a and now to talk about the position of something. Uh, so one way that I would usually explain to students is uh, think about the position of something, let's say position of a pen relative to a box. Uh, so like, what can you do to a pen? Uh, like how can you describe the position of the pen uh, relative to the box? You can say the pen is on the box, the pen is under the box, the pen is in the box, next to the box. I feel the pen over the box, through the box, and so on. So these words are all prepositions. Okay, so put down two examples here to show that you understand prepositions. And in this sentence, where are the preposition words, uh, the modifier starters? They are here, of the basketball team. So of is one of them. So of the basketball team, put a bracket around that. And the next is, you see another one, another preposition. Of course you do. The answer is in. The word in here is a preposition. So in and in what? In my school. So in my school. Put a bracket around in my school. Okay. So what does of the basketball team describe? Again, um, preposition describes, or sorry, a modifier describes the closest noun verb or sentence. So question, does of the basketball team describe the word captain or Jeremy? The answer is dun, 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 is captain because captain is the closest. So draw an arrow from of the basketball team to the captain. Okay, next, uh, there's another modifier phrase here in my school. So does in my school describe uh, Jeremy or basketball team or captain? The answer is three, two, one. Basketball team, of course. Why? Because basketball team is the closest to in my school. 
So draw an arrow from MI school to the basketball team, like so. Okay, what is the sentence, the, the sentence without the modifier? It's the captain is Jeremy. Uh, but which captain? You want to be a little bit more specific, like now you go captain, it's the basketball team, the captain, it's Lan Chou the captain. And uh, which basketball team is the one that's in my school? So in Chinese, if you understand Chinese, then uh, try to translate this sentence to Chinese. Uh, so if you take out the modifiers first, the sentence becomes the captain is Jeremy. So that becomes uh, like Dui Zhang, Zhang Shi Jeremy. I think that's the captain is Jeremy. And uh, like which Dui Zhang is it? It's the basketball team, the Dui Zhang. So this is, um, I'll, I'll do it this way. Uh, and I'll do it in blue because like, if you don't understand Chinese, um, ignore what I'm saying for the next like a minute or so. Uh, so you have the Dui Zhang, you have uh, here this is Lan Chou, Lan Chou Dui de. Uh, and here you have uh, 我的学校的学校的 and then you have is which is 是 and then you have Jeremy okay? so these are all the elements that you have in the sentence in Chinese uh, and then now but 队长篮球队的我的学校的是 Jeremy this doesn't make sense so you want to make it a little bit more uh, sense uh, make, make it make sense a little bit more so uh, think about the sentence structure here. I have a, a modifier here of the basketball team. Okay, so the modifier is because of the basketball team describes the captain. So Lan Chou Dui De describes the Dui Zhang. So in Chinese, you would have the description phrase in the beginning. So this would be like Lan Chou Dui De Dui Zhang. Um, oops, and then Jeremy is gone. So let me add Jeremy here. And then next part is in my school. So since in my school describes the basketball team, then in Chinese you have uh, in my school the Xue Xiao De. Uh, be before the word uh, for a basketball team, Lan Chou Dui. So this would be like so. So in Chinese, it's 我的学校的篮球队的队长是 Jeremy. Uh, the Chinese sentences are like reversed a little bit, uh, but you can see the relationship between Chinese and English. Uh, it should be pretty straightforward. Pretty cool too. Right, and if you don't understand Chinese, uh, don't worry about it. I'll delete everything here so we go back to English. Okay. Uh, now, let's move on to uh, the fifth kind of modifier starters. Uh, the fifth kind of modifier starters are a little bit more straightforward, and these are called time phrases. So I'll put here, time phrases, okay, T. So what are time phrases? Time phrases are things that tell you about time. So uh, things, for example, like uh, yesterday, or uh, let's say in 1999 and so on. And here, put down two more phrases that show, anything that shows time is a time phrase. Okay, like, um, like one hour ago, um, and so on. And here, where do you see time phrases? You see it here, last year. So put a bracket around last year. Okay, and time phrases, they describe either the closest noun or the closest whole sentence. Okay, so in this sentence, this could be last year, could be describing the race, like the race last year. Uh, so it could be like that. Or last year could also be describing the whole sentence, like when did he win the race? He won the race last year. So um, either way, you can do it like arrow to the race or arrow to like the whole sentence that like he won. Either way, it's fine. Finally, the last one. And this is kind of, this is, this is kind of dry stuff here. Um, so bear with me. Things will get a little bit more interesting. Uh, these are the the basic stuff that we have to go through. The last modifier starter is something called a subordinator. Subordinator. Uh, so grammar people have a lot of weird names for, for these different terms. Uh, subordinators, what are they? They are words like because, um, although, and uh, while, and as. Uh, and there are many other subordinators uh, but words like but, and, so, those are not subordinators. Uh, so if you don't know what subordinators are, we'll get to those in grammar point two, so don't worry about it. Okay, so in this sentence, League of Legends is popular because friends can battle in matches together. Where do you see subordinator? Bingo, you're so smart. The word because here is a subordinator. Okay, so because, and because what? Because friends can battle in matches together. This whole thing is like one phrase, so put the, whole, put the bracket for the whole thing here. And subordinators describe the whole sentence. So um, this whole phrase, because friends can battle and matches together, describes this. League of Legends is popular. 
So draw an arrow from this to the sentence legal legend is popular. Awesome. Okay, so now we're doing practices here. Um, I'll give you like 20 seconds to think about number one, and then we'll talk about, about it. Okay, time. Let's start. I actually don't have a timer here, so I'll just imaginary 20 seconds while you think. Uh, oh, uh, but the direction is back at the modifier first, then draw an arrow to the word it's describing, and then fix the sentence. Okay, so bracket the modifier in, the num in number one, and then draw an arrow to whatever that modifier is describing in that sentence. Okay, so um, it could be describing the wrong thing. Uh, and if it is, then you draw an arrow to the wrong, the wrong thing that it is describing. Okay, not what it's supposed to, but in this sentence as written. Okay, I'm not sure how much time passed, um, but I'm guessing that's roughly 20 seconds. So hopefully you have the modifier here in a short skirt. Make sure you understand if you if you get the wrong um, modifier bracketed, um, you have to understand why the thing that you bracketed is not a modifier and why this in a short skirt is a modifier. Uh, in a short skirt here is a modifier because the word in is a, do you know which one it is? It's a preposition here, like in, right here. So in a short skirt is a modifier. And what does in a short skirt describe in this sentence itself? Uh, if you say the young girl, you are wrong because young girl is not the closest. Remember here, a modifier describes the closest noun verb or sentence. Uh, so if you uh, so here, this describes the closest noun, so it should be described the dog, not the young girl. If you uh, draw the arrow to the wrong thing, then fix it, and since you got this point wrong, then maybe like draw a, draw a second underline here for the word closest, because like you got it wrong, so um, draw another line here to remind you that it's the closest noun for a word sentence. Okay, so this sentence is incorrect because inner short skirt does not describe the dog probably, or should it be? Um, inner short skirt should be describing the young girl. So here we will do, um, so how would you fix it? You'll probably do the young girl um, in a short skirt. So we're gonna do in dot 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 here to save ink uh, because ink is expensive. Uh, the young girl in a short skirt walks the dog, walks dot, dot, dot. Okay, and then this sentence would be correct because here in a short skirt, we're correctly describing the young girl. Okay, sentence number two, I'll give you an imaginary 20 seconds to think about it. Uh, again, bracket the modifier, draw an arrow to what that modifier is describing, and then fix the sentence. Ready, go. Okay, time's up, 20 seconds. I actually timed this time. Um, so in this sentence, there are a few modifiers. Um, if you're gonna pick all of them, um, there's for, which is a preposition, uh, like for like for the box. Um, there is which, uh, which is, do you know which one? Which is right here, which is a relative pronoun. And there's also on, um, on is also a preposition. Okay, so for which on are the three modifier starters? Um, and sometimes you might have like a big mod a big modifier within, or sorry, a big modifier bracketing a smaller modifier. Um, so in this case, uh, you have one starting here, and this is like for the interview. So this is the modifier here, and then there's a which here. Um, so this one doesn't just end at which had ketchup. This is like which had ketchup on it. Like this whole thing is one big modifier. So. You can imagine this whole thing as a big one, and then on it is like a small one here in the middle. Like so. It's kind of hard to draw on the laptop, so I'm going to move the bracket here. Okay, so on it is like a small one. Um, and is that correct? Okay, so think about it. Um, so for the college interview, what does that describe? That one describes the closest noun, so it describes a shirt. And, and that's right, because it's a shirt for the college interview. Okay, so this is correct. 
Um, but what about this part, which had ketchup on it? Um, this describes the closest noun, which is, what is that? Raymond, is that noun or verb? Is that Raymond, is that war? Is that shirt, college, or interview? And the answer is, drum roll, it's the interview. So draw an arrow to the interview. And that doesn't quite make sense because the interview probably doesn't have ketchup on it. That like interview doesn't have ketchup. Um, interview is like 面试, so 面试 wouldn't have ketchup on it. Um, so what has ketchup on it um, is the question you should be thinking of when you're fixing the sentence. And it's the shirt that has ketchup on it, right? Um, so how can you fix this sentence? You can fix it by, well, since which had ketchup on describes a shirt. So what you could do is you could do Raymond wore his shirt and then uh, you can put here, which comma, which had ketchup on it, uh, comma for, and then for the college interview. And I'll describe this a little bit. Um, this sent this structure here uh, by having a comma comma here. Um, this comma comma like sort of like separates out this phrase from the sentence. So um, I'll, I'll move this to the bottom to uh, explain because there's more space. Uh, this comma comma structure uh, makes this which had ketchup on it describe the shirt. But imagine this comma comma like a like a parenthesis. Um, so like if you ignore this part, then this would be Raymond wore his shirt for the college interview. And that is, that is also correct um, if you like ignore the modifier here. And you can ignore it because it's like a comma, comma structure. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that comma, comma structure later on in a, uh, which one? In the punctuation mark grammar point. Okay, so you can say Raymond, um, uh, Raymond wore his shirt, comma, which I catch up on a comma for the college interview. That's one way to fix it. And so the second way is you can move the modifier to the beginning of the sentence, like so. So if you have like for uh, the college interview uh, and move that phrase to the beginning, then for the college interview, this would be describing Raymond and Raymond wore his shirt, which I catch up on it. And that will also work. Okay, so here for number two, you can write whichever one of these two sentences here, and that would be correct. And for now, I'm gonna put number one here, but Know that number two is also correct. Okay, um, number three gets a little bit more trickier. So think about what the modifiers are, draw an arrow to what it's describing, and fix a sentence. Do you have 20 seconds? Go. Okay, that's just 10 seconds, but uh, let me interrupt here. So, uh, because this one might require a little bit of explanation. Uh, she found the necklace under the toilet that her boyfriend gave her. What are the modifier phrases? There is one here for under. Um, under is a preposition. So under the toilet is one phrase. And what does that describe? That describes necklace because it's the closest modifier. Oh, sorry, the closest noun. And the other one is here, that her boyfriend gave her. And that describes the closest noun. So is that the necklace or the toilet? The answer is the toilet, because again, the toilet is the closest. So do you see anything wrong here? Um, so the necklace under the toilet, like that's fine because like that's where the necklace is, the necklace is under the toilet. But what about the second modifier here um, that her boyfriend gave her? That describes the toilet. So then that means um, like, toilets. Okay, so that means uh, and in English that's like the toilet that her boyfriend gave her um, and so this is kind of odd because her boyfriend probably didn't um, give her a toilet. That would be a really weird gift. So this sentence is incorrect. Now how do you fix it? Uh, so one way to, one possible uh, thing that you may you may be thinking of is uh, what if I switch um, because this that her boyfriend gave her should be describing what it should be describing the necklace okay so what if I do this um, you know don't write this down yet I'm just gonna uh, write the notes on the side she found the necklace um, that her boyfriend gave her under the toilet 
Okay, so here I simply switch the two modifier phrases. And do you think this is right or wrong? So it's kind of tricky here. Uh, so first is that her boyfriend gave her that describes the closest down, so it describes the necklace, and that's correct, right? What about the second modifier here under the toilet? Is that correctly placed? So under the toilet here, uh, what does that describe? Uh, if you say her, then you are wrong. Why? Because her is not a noun, her is a pronoun. Okay, so does it describe her? Um, and so does it describe what's next? Uh, describes gave. Okay, so this under the toilet describes gave. If you have gave, then you are correct. Okay, so what does that mean? That means uh, if you read the sentence, you might be able to figure that out. Uh, she found the necklace that her boyfriend gave her under the toilet. Do you hear it? If I, uh, I'll say it once. She found the necklace that her boyfriend gave her under the toilet. Okay, hopefully you hear it. Um, that means um, like gave her under the toilet, like um, and, uh, and here again, I'll translate this sentence to Chinese. So um, like if English doesn't make sense, then maybe this other way in Chinese will make more sense to you. Uh, and if you don't understand Chinese, uh, sorry, just ignore me for the next two minutes again. Okay, so this is she found the necklace. So that means uh, Okay, so there's that, and then there's that her boyfriend gave her, so that's like And then there's also uh, uh, Let's start with the original sentence. Uh, she found the necklace under the toilet that her boyfriend gave her. Okay, and so in the original sentence, you have and you have uh, There should be a the here. And then there's a uh, Oops. Okay, so there's a motorcycle outside. Uh, okay, so um, in the original sentence, what is it? What does it mean in Chinese? So since under the toilet describes necklace, so in Chinese you'll put under the toilet, uh, where in the sentence, since that describes necklace, 项链, so you move that before 项链. Because in Chinese, the description phrase goes before. So, This is the sentence up to she found the necklace on the toilet. So far, so good. Uh, that should be the, the girl top, but that's fine. Uh, and then here, that her boyfriend gave her. So that describes what? Describes the toilet. So where do you put this phrase in the Chinese sentence? Since that describes toilet, then you put that in front of toilet. So, So, this is a correct translation of the original sentence, but the meaning is incorrect because So that's wrong. And then back to this sentence here. She found the notice that boyfriend gave her on the toilet. So using the same logic, how would you translate the Chinese sentence? Okay, so you have and that describes So you move that before So far so good. What about the second part? The, where is the word? The, it's gone. Uh, that's fine. The, okay, and where does that go? That goes, that describes gave. Okay. Um, oh, the, the is like optional. Um, like in Chinese, there's sometimes you don't have the word the. So you move that, since that describes gave, you move that before gave in Chinese. Okay, so this is ta zhao dao. Right? Does the translation make sense? Like that's that's how you're supposed to translate from Chinese to English. So again, this is that's that's what I mean by the meaning is incorrect because um, like it's kind of kind of a weird place for her boyfriend to say, hey honey, this is the necklace I'm gonna give you, uh, and let's do it under the toilet. That's kind of weird. So this sentence is still incorrect. So the question is then, how can you fix the sentence? And you see how the sentence get confusing when you have like two modifiers back to back. Because in this case, when you when both of these phrases when both of these phrases are trying to describe the same thing, necklace, then uh, you can't put them like back to back like the like this way. Um, one way you can fix it is you can do um, you can move the modifier to the beginning of the sentence. Okay, so you can do. Um, yeah, I'll rewrite the sentence here. You can do um, 
under the toilet, she found the necklace that her boyfriend gave her. That would be right, because then under the toilet is describing like she. Uh, that doesn't mean like she is under the toilet, that means where the action happens, she found the necklace under the toilet. And the second part that her boyfriend gave her is correctly describing the word toilet. So this is a possible solution to the sentence, uh, to making the sentence meaning correct. And if you have other ones, um, check with your classmate or the teacher and make sure that your sentence is, your sentence is also correct. Now, let's move on to number four. Number four, my teacher is a skinny man with a mustache weighing only 120 pounds. Okay, bracket the modifier. Okay, so here the modifiers are, there's a with here, so it's with a mustache. Okay, do you see another one? What is the second modifier? It is weighing. Weighing, because it's a verb ing sentence. So weighing, and weighing what? It's weighing only 120 pounds. So this whole thing is a modifier here. Okay, so is this sentence correct? With the mustache describes a skinny man. Which is right, like a skinny, a skinny man with a mustache. Uh, what about the second part here, weighing only 120 pounds? That describes the mustache. Okay. Uh, and that is probably not right because mustache is something that's supposed to be really light. Um, but weighing only 120 pounds, that's like pretty heavy and mustache probably don't weigh 120 pounds. Uh, and uh, just to make sure that if you um, like the Chinese, uh, also put Chinese here so that um, if Chinese makes sense, then you have a second way to understand the sentence. Uh, this is, uh, 我的老师是瘦, uh, how do you say skinny man? Like, 瘦子, I don't know. Uh, 我老师是瘦子. And then there's a with a mustache, and that is uh, 有胡子的. And then there's also weighing 100, 120 pounds, and that is 重重, 一二零八. You have these elements here. So the original sentence says, uh, your hoods describes skinny man. So where do you put your hoods before skinny man? Well, that looks right. Now, uh, this describes mustache. And so in English, you remove that to before mustache. So, well, And that doesn't make sense, right? So that's wrong. And um, let's just quickly move on to how to make a sentence correct. Um, well, also, uh, so I'll, I'll tell you the answer here. Um, what you can do is you can move the modifier to the beginning, like in sentence three. So you can do weighing only 150 pounds or 120 pounds, uh, comma, my teacher is a skinny man with a mustache. And that would be right. Okay. Uh, and here I'll leave you to think about what if you switch the two modifiers here because weighing only 120 pounds should be describing a skinny man, right? What if you just switch the two modifiers and you have my teacher is a skinny man uh, weighing only 120 pounds with a mustache? Is that correct or not? I'll leave that to you and uh, we'll probably talk about it later or I'll have the teacher talk about this with you afterwards. But. This sentence here would be correct, a correct sentence or correct meaning to what four was trying to say. Lastly, number five, we need to write a research paper about the Civil War in my history class. So let's start with bracketing the modifiers. There is, um, you can think of like two as a modifier, that's fine, um, to write a research paper. And then um, there is another one like about about here, about is a preposition, about the Civil War, and then in my history class. Okay, so to write a research paper, this to is actually not, not really a modifier, um, because it's like need to do something. So like, it's like need to, it's like one thing. Uh, it's like to write. But um, either way, if you bracket the word, the phrase to write, that's fine. It, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter too much. So is the sentence correct? Um, so about the Civil War, uh, what does that describe? That describe the research paper. So like, Guan Yu Civil War, the research paper. The, civ the research paper about the Civil War, and that's correct. What about the second part, in my history class? So in my history class, this is describing which phrase here? It describes the Civil War, because it's the closest. So this is the Civil War in my history class. Um, and 
this is not right because this means like an actual civil war in my history class. It doesn't mean like the civil war topic that I learned in my history class. So this sentence is incorrect. And how do you fix it? Uh, one way to make it, uh, to re rearrange a sentence would be, let's say, what about we do this? In my history class, we need to write a research paper about the civil war. Okay, and that would be correct, fixed the sentence. Now, let's move on to the next page, the next topic, point number three. Okay, and oops, so for point number three here, you can write down the notes. Okay, and the notes here are, uh, if you can add who or which, plus um, is, well, uh, I'm not sure if you know what a be a to be verb is. If you know what a to be verb is, you can write who or which plus be. Uh, if you don't know what a to be verb is, then don't write be here because then the notes wouldn't make sense to you. Uh, what you can write down is a to be verb are uh, is words like is or are or uh, were or was or am. So you can write down here if you can add who or which plus is or are. Uh, if you can add who or which plus is or are. Uh, to the beginning of a phrase, that phrase is also a modifier. Okay, write that note down, but also think about what that means. If you can add who or which plus is or are to the beginning of a phrase, then that phrase is also a modifier. Okay, so before we said that a modifier always starts with one of the six modifier starters. Um, and so this is a, sort of like an exception to that rule. Um, if you can add who or which plus is or to the beginning of the phrase, then that phrase is also a modifier. Um, so here you can look at the practice sentence number one. And the question is, is this underlying phrase a popular arm using a modifier? So according to what we learned before um, on the previous page, a popular arm using is not a modifier because you start with A, and A is not one of the six modifier starters. But um, the point, the point here says if you can add a who or which plus is or are, and you have to add two words. So the first word is who or which, like you choose one. And then the second word is is or are, you choose one here. And then you just like stick that before a phrase that you're, you're looking, you're checking, and see if the phrase makes sense. Okay, so here draw like an insert carrot here and write down um, who, because it's a person, who is. And you read the sentence, Rihanna, who is a popular R&B singer, was born in Barbados, but later moved to New York City. This makes sense, right? So that means a popular R&B singer is also a modifier, even though it doesn't have a modifier starter. So this is, yes. okay, so that's like, that's like an imaginary, uh, like a, not imaginary, like a hidden phrase, who is a popular R&B singer. Uh, now let's look at number two. So number two, an American rapper. This looks just like number one, a popular R&B singer. Um, but um, is an American rapper a modifier? So you do the same thing. You try to add in a who or which plus is or are here to the beginning of this underlying phrase. And you read the sentence. So now the sentence becomes Jay-Z is who is an American rapper. And that doesn't sound right, right? There's like is who is. So the answer to number two is no, this is not a modifier. Okay, so uh, point number three here is like a self-check to uh, figure out whether a phrase is a modifier or not, um, if it doesn't have a modifier starter. All right, let's move on to point four. And for point four here, um, write down the notes. Uh, if a modifier at the beginning does not have a subject, then, okay, so that's the first part. If this is true, then um, the modifier describes the first thing after the comma. If a modifier at the beginning does not have a subject, then the modifier describes the first thing after the comma. What the heck does that mean? So read that to yourself and think about it. And the hint is, uh, the example sentence is in this sentence right here. So also read the sentence to yourself and see if you can find out what's wrong with the sentence.
Okay, so um, the point says if a modifier is at the beginning, um, and here we have a modifier at the beginning, and how do we know this is a modifier? Because we have walk in, so verb ing, walk in. Okay, and so here, so this part is, is correct so far, a modifier at the beginning, and this is, does not have a subject. Okay, so subject is the main thing or the main person that is doing the action. Okay, so in the beginning, we have walking off the basketball court. So now you think, by just reading this part, you ignore the second part. Uh, by just reading the first part, do you see, um, and, and don't, don't cross this out, I'm just crossing this out to make it clear to you. If you just read this first part, walking off the basketball court, does that tell you who is walking out the basketball court? No, it doesn't. So that's what it means by it does not have a subject because this part doesn't tell you who is walking off. So the condition here in the if satisfies. So what happens? Then this modifier here describes the first thing after the comma. So what is the first thing after the comma here? The first thing after the comma is, it's not the word the because the is not a thing. The crowd is a thing. So draw an arrow from here to the phrase, to the word crowd crowd here. Okay, so this phrase describes the word crowd, but that is probably not right because the crowd are the people in the stands and they don't walk off the basketball court. Who does in this sentence? Jeremy Lin does. Okay, so this sentence is incorrect. And what are two ways to fix a sentence? Let's say if you really love the first part, walking off the basketball court, um, how, what can you do to the second part to make the sentence right? Since the first part describes, or should be describing what's after the comma, then you think about what this is describing, walking on the basketball court. Um, and so the first way is you can, um, uh, how do you phrase this? You can say, um, start the second part with what the modifier describes. Okay, and so here, since the modifier here, walking off the basketball court, describes, um, who? It's describes Jeremy Lin. So, then you should have uh, Jeremy Lin, so I'm going to call him Jalen. Uh, uh, what does Jalen do? Jalen uh, receives a standing ovation from the crowd. Blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. As long as you have the word Jer uh, Jeremy Lin here, then that shows you understand what this point is talking about. So draw an arrow from walking out the vessel cord to Jeremy Lin also, because that describes that. Now, what is the second way? If you really love the second part of the sentence, uh, you want to keep part, the crowd gives him a standing ovation, what can you do to the first part? Uh, you can do, you can, um, let's see, um, you can add the subject of the modifier, modifier, add the subject of the modifier uh, to the modifier. I don't know if that makes sense. Add the subject of the modifier or to the first part. Okay, I think that makes sense. So add the subject of the modifier to the first part. Then you look at the modifier walking off the basketball, basketball court. Okay, so that's here. Walking off the people court. And add the subject. So who is walking off the basketball court? Jeremy Lin is. So you try to add Jeremy Lin into the sentence. So you can do like J Lin is walking out the puzzle court, or Jeremy Lin walks off the puzzle court. Both are correct. And, but then you can just do this. Um, do you know why? This is a, so here you have a complete sentence, Jeremy Lin walks off the basketball court. And the second part also has a complete sentence, the crowd gives me a standing ovation. So if you have two complete sentences like that, then this becomes a run on. We'll talk about run on in ground point two. Uh, so, but what you can do is you can add another word before this. You can say like, uh, as Jeremy Lin walks off, or when Jeremy Lin walks off, then the sentence will be cool. All right, here are two practice questions, uh, two practice sentences, and follow the instructions, back to the modifier phrase at the beginning of the sentence. And if the sentence have a modified error, fix it using, one of the, using both ways above. So using uh, way number one and way number two. Okay, and here I'll give you uh, I don't know how much time I should give you. I'm going to give you a virtual uh, two minutes, actually one minute for number one. Um, you have to give two ways of fixing a sentence, and then we'll go over number one. Then I'll give you another minute to do number two. Ready, set, go.
And if you're not sure, just look at the notes above about how to fix the sentence. All right, time's up. That is one minute. So what do you have here? Arrested for drunk driving, the police gave the rock star a DUI ticket and fined him 200 USD. Bracket the modifiers at the beginning, the modifier phrase at the beginning. So arrested for drunk driving. This arrested is the past participle. This is like the passive one, like someone was arrested for drunk driving. And what does that describe? That describes, according to this rule here, a modifier at the beginning does not have a subject. So you look at this sentence, arrested for drunk driving. Oh. Ignore that. Uh, so arrested for drunk driving here um, does not have a subject, meaning that if you just read this part, you don't know who is being arrested. Then where would you find out? The sentence, the rule says, the modifier describes the first thing after the comma. So this here, arrested for drunk driving, describes the police. And that's incorrect. So uh, what should arrested for drunk driving be describing? It describes the rock star. So. The first way to fix a sentence is you can have arrested for drunk driving. The rock star um, receives receives a DUI ticket. Um, there's the police. So received a DUI ticket by the police and was fined 200 USD. Okay, you don't have, you don't need the exact sentence like I have here. As long as you have the word rock star here, then you're all good. Okay, the second way is you're fixing the first part, right? So you're adding the subject with the modifier to the first part. So um, what does this modifier describe? Arrested for driver, drunk driving, this describes the rock star. So you need to add a rock star to the first part. Okay, so arrested for drunk driving. And then you're trying to add the word rock star. So this would be um, rock star was arrested. And then this would be like, then you have a run on, so you add a, a word that begin like as or um, since or when. But here I think as makes sense, so I'm going to put as again. As the rock star was arrested for drunk driving, the police gave him a DUI ticket for and fined him to the, uh, 200 USD. Number two here, I'll also give you a one minute countdown, and um, you have to figure out what are the two ways to fix the sentence. Actually, here I'm going to give you like uh, uh, for 45 seconds because maybe you're getting a hang of it. So we'll save a little time here. You can start. All right, time is up. So what do you have here? Uh, waiting to get his test back, this is a modifier. Okay, so that's a modifier and that describes, um, since that doesn't have a subject, it doesn't tell you who is waiting to get his test back. So that describes the first thing after the comma, the anxiety. And that's wrong because the anxiety doesn't wait to get his test back. Who does? It's Lewis, so this should be waiting to get his test back. Hopefully you have this, you have Lewis, feels, uh, and again, many ways you can fix a sentence. You can say Lewis feels uh, overwhelmingly anxious. That's one way to do it. Uh, if you have something else and it makes sense, then totally cool, as long as you have the word Lewis here, because that describes Lewis. And the second way, 
um, you try to add in uh, the thing that this modifier is describing, Lewis, to the first part. So you can say, um, I don't, I don't want to keep on using the word as, but as makes sense again here. So as Lewis uh, waits, or you can say as Lewis uh, is waiting to get his test back, and then the anxiety he feels is overwhelming. That would be correct because you set the word Lewis here. Cool, let's move on to the next page. Here I'll give you, I don't know how much time I should give you, but um, try to do this question. And um, after you get the right answer, also think about why that's the right answer. And then we'll talk about it. Okay, go ahead. And when you have a right answer, make sure you're also able to explain why the other answers are incorrect. And don't just like randomly guess one or um, go with what you th what what you think it sounds right. Because then I can say, like, oh, like another choice sounds better, right? and then we'll argue forever. Okay, so it's a minute here. I'll give you 20 more seconds to think about this question. If you already have an answer, then check over. Okay, so by now it's 80 seconds. Um, what is your answer? If you chose A, you are wrong. If you chose, uh, actually, I'll walk through this question first. So hopefully you realize that uh, the key here is if you don't do it the right way, then this question has a lot of words to read and then choices A, B, C, D are also a lot of words to read. So this question will take you like a minute, maybe a minute and a half, maybe longer. Uh, but if you do this question the right way, then you should spend no more than, I don't know, eight seconds uh, but definitely no more than 10 seconds in doing this really long question. And that's what we'll teach you here, a really cool SAT and ACT strategy. Um, so first is remember about modifiers um, and look at, take a look again here at rule number four. Rule number four says if a modifier at the beginning does not have a subject, then the modifier describes the first thing after the comma. Okay, how does that rule apply to this sentence here? So first is you have to realize that in the beginning of the sentence, you also have a modifier here um, in the word in. So in addition is a modifier. Once you realize that, then this phrase here, in addition to being vital to the formation and maintenance of strong bones and teeth, this whole thing is a modifier here. Okay. And then next is you want to see if this modifier gives you a subject. Does it tell you who is vital to the formation and maintenance of all strong bones and teeth? Within the bracket itself, it doesn't. So when that happens, uh, where is the, like, what does this describe? This describes the first thing after the comma. So you look at the first thing after the comma in all the choices. Okay? So you don't read through number one A in its entirety or the other choices. You only look at what's right after the comma. Okay? And on your, uh, in your book, I want you to also underline the thing right after the comma. Number uh, choice A might be tricky, um, like is it calciums or calciums uses? And students get confused with this too. Um, so a quick way to, to verify this is, or to, so that you can figure out whether this is talking about calcium or uses, is um, like a sentence like this, calciums uses, is imagine a sentence like so. Uh, imagine a sentence, um, my dad's jacket is black. Okay, so here I also have like calcium, like calcium uses my dad's jacket. So a quick check is here, if I have this sentence here, is this talking about the thing before the apostrophe, my dad? Like is this talking about like my dad is black or is it talking about my jacket is black or, or jacket is black? 
probably jacket is black. My dad, I mean, my, my dad could be black, but he, this is, the jacket is black. So same thing here, calcium uses. This is talking about the uses, not calcium. Okay, uh, and so that's number uh, choice A. Choice B, same thing here, calcium uses. So underline calcium uses. Um, don't read the whole sentence yet. C is calcium, just calcium. And D is our, not our, but our body. Right? Talking about the body. Um, all right. So once you have that next is you look through, um, you think about the first part of the modifier and see what that modifier is describing. Okay. And the first part, uh, something is vital to the form. Uh, vital means important. So something is important to the formation and maintenance of strong bones and teeth. What is important? Is it the calcium's uses is important, or the calcium is important, or our body is important? Uh, the answer is it's it's calcium. Calcium is important to forming and keeping strong bones and teeth. It's calcium itself. So if you just look at the first word here you know right away that A is wrong, B is wrong, and D is wrong, and the only thing that's left with is C. So C right away, you know, is the answer. And you don't even need to read the rest of the sentence. You just look at the first word and you know the answer. It's C. And so we'll summarize what that tip is in um, point number six here below. Uh, so write this down. Uh, the strategy is if the modifier at the beginning uh, keyword here um, doesn't have a subject ah, too big. Okay, if the modifier at the beginning, all right, it, it doesn't fit. So I'm gonna make the word smaller. If the modifier at the beginning doesn't have a subject, then what happens? And how, how do you approach these kind of questions? Then uh, look at the first thing after the comma. Okay, as in you don't read the whole sentence, but you only look at the first thing after the comma and see if that thing is what the modifier is describing. That's what we did in number one here. Okay, and I'll walk through the practices here with you guys. Uh, so number one, when donating money to charity, a nonprofit organization that will use your gift wisely should be your priority. That's the set the sentence. And what are the choices? I'll give you like, I don't know, like 20 seconds to think about it. All right, so the answer is uh, raise your hand if you have A, raise your hand if you have B, raise your hand if you have C, raise your hand if you have D. Okay, cool. Um, hopefully you guys raise your hand for B because um, here you have a modifier in the beginning and this modifier that doesn't tell you who is donating money to charity. So in the original sentence, who is donating money? It's the nonprofit organization. Okay, so draw an arrow to the nonprofit. And uh, a nonprofit organization can be donating money to the charity, but if, if you think about the meaning of the sentence, this is not the organization donating money. This is someone, a person donating money. So you look at the choices. Um, a has nonprofit organization. B has you. C has choose and action. And D has nonprofit organization. So the answer is B because it's you. You are donating money to charity, not the organization and not anything else. So B is the right answer. All right, number two. Uh, since shorter sentence here, so I'll give you I don't know, 15 seconds to do the question. Start now. All right, time's up. Uh, so look through, look at the beginning, having become tired of his old job. Here you have a modifier. And so for the modifier described, it describes the first thing after the comma, um, only if it doesn't have a subject, remember. Uh, so here it doesn't have a subject because it doesn't tell you who is becoming tired. So who is uh, the first thing after the comma? Okay, so look at the first thing after the comma. The first thing after the comma here is not Tom, but Tom's parents. Because again, like here, uh, oh, I deleted it. Like, 
it's not my dad is black, it's the jacket is black. So this is not talking about Tom, but talking about Tom's parents. Okay, so this is saying um, Tom's parents are becoming tired of his, of his old job. Not quite. Uh, not the parents are being tired. It's, it's Tom, um, the, the, the guy here, being tired. So B has his parents, B is wrong, C has looking, and D has Tom. So hey, we have Tom here. So the answer is D, because Tom is be becoming tired of his old job. Easy? All right, number three. I'll give you 10 seconds to do it. Start now. Time's up, time flies. Okay, number three, when used diluted, um, and I'm not gonna read the whole sentence because you shouldn't be reading the whole sentence. If you are, then you're reading too many words, and that's really tiring. When used diluted, hey, you have a modifier in the beginning, and does it tell you what or who is used diluted and undiluted? It doesn't. Um, do you know what undiluted means? Undiluted uh, or diluted? Diluted means um, adding water to something. Okay, so if you have, um, I don't know, like, uh, like lemon juice, uh, and if you add lemon juice with water, then it's diluted lemon juice. But if it's just pure lemon juice, then it's undiluted. Okay, so when used undiluted, um, and you have a modifier here, so what is A in the original sentence? What does when used undiluted describe? This describes you. But is it correct? Uh, this is saying you are being used undiluted, but uh, undiluted or like being used undiluted, this should be like something, not someone is being diluted. So A is wrong. B has liquid bleach, C has you, and D has then liquid bleach. Kind of weird having the word then here. So which one is the right answer? The right answer is B, liquid bleach. Okay, last, uh, oh, no, not, not last one. There are still more questions to go. Uh, for numbers four to eight, um, I won't go through all of them because that's a lot of time that I have to go through. Um, do those uh, right now, pause the video, and when you guys are done, uh, group into pairs. And uh, when, so when your neighbor is done, go over questions number four, five, six, and seven, and eight, and uh, make sure you guys have the right answer, but don't just look over the answers um, talk about why also and let's say if uh, I don't know for number four let's say you chose B and your neighbor chose C um, don't be like oh like you're smarter so I'm gonna erase my answer I'm gonna choose C also like no uh, ask him like if, if he is smarter then ask him hey uh, why did you choose C and have him explain to you why C is the right answer or and same for like I don't, I don't know what the right answer is I know what the right answer is of course but I'm not gonna tell you Okay, so um, do these questions, do them in pairs, talk to, talk to someone, and then afterwards, uh, when you're done, continue the video and we'll move on to the next part. Okay, the next part. So hopefully you talked about numbers eight, uh, four to eight with your neighbor. If not, then, um, well, you should. Okay, so we'll move on. Uh, hopefully you understand what um, this point here, uh, this SAT strategy is. If there's a modifier at the beginning and it doesn't have a subject, then look at the first thing you have to the comma. So like these questions, you should be able to do them really quickly. Since you have enough practice and hopefully you understand everything here, we are going to do a mini quiz coming up. Okay, and the mini quiz is um, on the next page, there are 10 more questions and your goal is to do all 10 questions within three minutes and get everything correct. Okay, if you remember what modifiers are and remember all the strategies, then this will be really easy. If not, then you're gonna take either more than three minutes or you're gonna make mistakes. Ready, I'm gonna start my timer here. Uh, three minutes timer. Ready, set, go.
So two minutes left. And if you're super fast, you might be almost done already. If you're not, then keep going. So just past one minute and 30 seconds. Okay, you really shouldn't need to rush. Um, it's the same concepts in the 10 questions. So if you understand everything, you should do at a normal pace and you'll finish within three minutes. Five seconds left. And if you're done, look over the answers and make sure they are all correct. All right, time is up. Hopefully you finish in time. Um, and all right, now let's go over these questions, these 10 questions, and hopefully you have the right answers to all of them. Number one, um, again, you don't have to read through the whole sentence because you have a modifier here in the beginning, walking along the side of the road. And this part doesn't tell you who is walking along the side of the road. So then you look at the choices, um, a is the car, but the car doesn't walk. B is I, like I walk, so B is B could be right. C is a car again, and it, it also doesn't walk, so the answer is B, I, because I was walking. Hopefully you got that right. If you had it right, give yourself a self high five. And let's move on to number two. Number two says return to you after three years. And here again, it doesn't have a subject, so it doesn't tell you what this modifier here is talking about. So you should be looking for an in your mind, you could be thinking about returning to Yale after three years. So this must be a person returning to Yale. Okay. And A has a campus, not a person. B has it, not a person. C is a he, a person. And D is Yale, not a person. So the answer is C. Hopefully you're two out of two so far. Number three, known as a symbol of freedom. Uh, that part is, again, a modifier here. Um, and what does that modifier describe? Since that modifier doesn't tell you what or who is known as a symbol of freedom, then you look at the thing after the comma. Hmm. Okay, ignore that. Uh, so you look at what's after the comma, and in choice A, you have France, because, but France is not known as a symbol of freedom. Um, uh, and choice B is a Statue of Liberty. Okay, that is known as a symbol of freedom. C is the US, not known as the symbol of freedom. Uh, D is friends, also not the symbol of freedom. So the answer is B. All right, if you're making a few mistakes in these three questions, then you should pause the video, uh, understand how these questions should be done, and continue doing the rest, and continue with uh, going over for the rest of, of uh, starting with number four. If you are getting them right, then we will continue. Number four, lecturing at the university. This is a modifier here. It doesn't tell you who or what is lecturing. So you look for that after the comma. In choice A, it's read. And B is the poetry. C is her audience. And D is Professor Clark. Uh, should be, since it's someone lecturing at the university, that should be the professor. So the answer is D. All right, number five. Uh, brought up in a suburb with little diversity to speak of. Um, 
this part doesn't have the modifier, uh, a modifier here doesn't have the subject, and that looks like a person, someone's being brought up. So A has it, B has I, C has when, D has moving, so the answer is B. Number six, although worry about not being in the same college as friends, as his friends, although worried, so I think that's like someone, someone is not worried, right? Oh, so someone is worried, uh, um, choice A has Misha's concern, so not concern, B has choosing, C has a school, D has Misha, so the answer is Misha, because it should be a person that's worried about not being in the same college. D, uh, so sorry, number seven, after hearing advice from his sisters, uh, hearing advice from his sisters, so in your mind you should be thinking, all right, so that should be someone hearing advice. A has Tommy's decision, not someone hearing the advice. B has taking, D has Tommy, C has Tommy, and D has Tommy. So first round through, A and B are wrong because those are not people. Uh, C and D are people of Tommy. So then you look at C and D and see which one is right. C has Tommy deciding to take a nap, uh, take a gap year. Uh, D has Tommy decided to take a gap year. And between these two, it should be D because it's Tommy decided, not Tommy deciding. So the answer is D. Number eight, as the president of the United States. So with that modifier in the beginning, you know that it should be a president of the United States after the comma. A has Barack Obama, that looks like the president. Uh, B has everyone, not the president. C has Obama's plan. And again, this is not Obama, this is Obama's plan. So C is also not it. And D has access. So the answer is A, because it's, because Obama is the or was the president of the United States. Number nine, formerly a five-star basketball recruit and a McDonald's all-star player in high school. So you know this is talking about a player, a basketball player. Uh, number choice A is it, so it is not a person. B is Zion Williamson, so this is kind of tricky. Um, Zion Williamson's achievements. So again here, this is not the person Zion Williamson, this is Zion Williamson's achievements. So in B, this is talking about achievements, not the person. C is Zion Williamson's success. So C is success, not again, not the person, and D is Alan Williamson, and this is the person, so the answer is D. Number 10, uh, defeating 23-time major champion Serena Williams in the US Open final. So that again tells you that should be a person. Choice A has the 2018 Grand Slam singles tournament, so that's a tournament, not right. B has Naomi Osaka, uh, person, might be right. C is Grand Slam singles tournament, so tournament, not right, and D has Williams, a person. Okay, so you might have to think and make double check that um, you're referring to the right person here. And this is someone defeating Serena Williams, so it shouldn't be Williams. Like this would be Williams defeating herself. That doesn't make sense. This is Nami Osaka defeating Serena Williams. So the answer is B. All right. If you have all ten questions right, give yourself two high fives because you are awesome. If you have more than one mistakes then that probably means you didn't really quite understand the modifier lesson. So uh, I would suggest you to review the notes or rewatch this video so you have a better grasp. Again, modifiers are so important for uh, starting from grammar points two and three and so on. So if you don't really understand modifiers, it makes no sense for you to continue on to either the homework section or the next grammar point. So review again and then move on. If you think modifiers and everything makes sense, then go ahead and do the homework section. Um, and the process that you need to do for the homework is first you do them by yourself individually. Then you do the homework section. Uh, and after you're done, you go over the questions with your neighbors, uh, go over the answers. And for things like multiple choice, again, if you don't know uh, something, then ask your neighbor for explanation. Don't just copy the answers that defeats the purpose of doing these practice questions. Um, explain to your neighbor why you think your answer is right. Or if you don't know, then ask your neighbor. And if you get stuck, let your teacher know, let us know, and we are here to help. Good luck, and I will see you next time for Grammar Point 2 on Fragments and Run-On. Bye-bye.